saw Dave jump straight for his iPad when Urban Dictionary was mentioned. Um, I'm not going to repeat anything that's written there, but it's a fun game we found recently. If you have a couple of drinks, um, uh, Urban Dictionary, your own name. It's amazing fun. Really, really good. Uh, disturbing and humorous. Uh, we have one more person before we're going to take a short break. Um, uh, Emma's housemate. Um, so this could be good. And possibly the most dramatic... Uh, title of any of the stories tonight. So please welcome uh, Morphs to finish us off. Uh, well, thank you. Um, yes, it is true. I will from next week be Emma's housemate. Um, we're not going to talk about that tonight. We'll set that for next uh, next speaker's event. Um, as I said, you said, yeah, how almost dying on Everest is the best thing that ever happened to me. Well, I think probably speaking one on one is if you have a catchy headline. People will come. <laughs> Clearly, it worked tonight. Um, so I think I'll just set the scene first. Um, yes, I did attempt to climb Everest, um, and two, I did fail miserably. I didn't make it on it. Um, but to kind of set the scene as well, as I said, you know, I was born and raised in Denmark, a country that's famous for butter, bacon, and definitely not mountains. Uh, the highest point in Denmark is around 170 metres, <laughs> if you like it, around 200 foot shorter than Box Hill. <laughs> uh, and I think to, to kind of like round off the, the irony in it, it's actually named Sky Mountain. <laughs> Not even you can Google it, Dave. Uh, so a few years ago, I was travelling through Africa, and as you do, you kind of, you know, group up with other travellers, you group up with other people, kind of share your ideologies and I think it's your ideas. So on New Year's Eve, a few years ago, I was sat in a little lodge in Tanzania, chatting to people about what's happening in your lives, what, what are your next adventure, what, what, what's, you know, what's in the cards for you? And I was talking to these people, one of them was, I was going to climb Everest. Another one was, oh, I want to climb another high mountain, I want to go to the North Pole. And I was kind of sad, I'm not really sure whether it's all the, the lovely African beer or it was my insanity talking, but before the evening was over, I committed to arranging an expedition to Everest. I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> uh, probably not the best yes I've ever done, to be honest, or said in my life. Um, but the good thing about saying yes when there's other people around is the fact that it's, it's a commitment. Uh, people will support you, people will encourage you, They'll laugh at you sometimes, clearly. Um, but for me, it took me two years of hard, hard training. Uh, and finally, in 2010, I stood in Kathmandu, ready to climb Mount Everest. Um, Mount Everest, as you all know, is the highest uh, mountain in the world. Um, much higher than anything I'd ever climbed, obviously. Um, but nowhere near anything I'd climbed either. So I'd never been above 7,000 meters. I'd never climbed in Nepal before. Um, and I, as I said before, I'm terrified of heights. Uh, maybe a tiny detail, but for me, you know, climbing the highest mountain in the world, being afraid of heights, I'm not really being too confident about how is this going to unfold. But I kind of took the plunge, went into it, um, and climbing a mountain like Everest could easily take two to three months. Um, I've got five minutes today, and I'm already far into it. So the bottom line is that. I spent around a month on the mountain, managed to get up through the ice fall, down to base camp, up through the ice fall, camp one, camp two. And I made it up to camp two quite a few times, which is approximately 22,000 foot. So a nice height for someone who's never really been into to Himalayan climbing before. Sadly, one morning I woke up. I kind of feel that I couldn't breathe properly. I thought it was just the altitude, that would kind of make sense. I didn't have a headache, it wasn't altitude sickness. Um, I kind of consulted our doctor from base camp, I was on the radio, uh, got a lot of ideas, they thought, okay, well, if you just have a nap, and we'll see if it kind of works out, <laughs> um, it didn't, um, I woke up the next morning, I kind of feel like my lung were, or my breath, so to speak, was, was kind of like playing up, so I thought, okay, well, something needs, someone needs to, to look at this, something needs to happen, so I decided to Okay, I'll, I'll just send out to base camp, I'll kind of consult the doctor in person. I can look at me, they kind of determine whether it's just like, <coughs> they got something called the Kumpakov, which is just like the, the thin air and all the lungs kind of come in the altitude. Um, when I made it down to base camp, late evening, they sent me further down the valley. Um, 
I trekked with uh, a few of my Sherpas all the way down through the, the Kuba Valley. This is not from Nepal, by the way, before you ask that question. Um, ended up in Namcha Bazaar, which is the only place in the Kuba Valley that's actually got an X-ray machine. And when I say X-ray machine, we're talking something that's all than my, than me, basically. Um, I'm not really sure whether it was a drawing or an X-ray. It, it could be something in between. Uh, but the fact is that the, the diagnosis was that my left lung had collapsed. So I was basically called at around 22,000 foot with a collapsed lung and kind of, I should be sure, you know, I wasted, spent, depending on how you look at it, around 25 grand on this expedition. Uh, I only spent less than a month on the mountain. Um, but I was evacuated down to Kathmandu. I had my, um, my needle re deflation or my, my lung kind of was sorted out over the, the next week in hospital. And I think to to go, I oh know it's, it's very quick, we've got five minutes. Um, the bottom line is that all the way through this process, the people to whom I've committed this promise, or to, you know, who can't be supported all the way through, were there when it started, all the way through and afterwards. Uh, they were what's well, probably comes close to what we have here today as well. You know, we've got a tribe, we've got a group of people here who all support each other. So, whether how stupid your idea is, whether you want to climb a mountain, um, in my case, Everest, or you want to go canoeing down the Mississippi, or you want to walk to the North Pole, surround yourself with positive people. That's what helped me through, not just the lead up, the training, but also all the, the, the downstone afterwards, having to justify to your sponsors why you didn't make the summit, and why you wasted their money on, on not making a summit, not getting that photo from the summit of Everest. Uh, but just as much, your life is a mention, you only get one go at it. Um, even if there's a slight doubt in your mind whether you can do it, give it a go. If you fail, take it as a lesson learned. Don't take it as something that's going to affect you for the rest of your lives. Um, it took me a while to get over Everest, mentally, um, but I've learned later on in my life that the only way to get over defeats, failures if you like, or in my case here, a near death experience at altitude, is to surround yourself with positive people. Like we all have done here today. And I think that's my, my, my message to all of you guys today. Thank you.